Welcome back, friends. Today we will be investigating another case from Let's Defend, and this time it's SOC 287. From the title, it looks like this alert involves detecting web exploitation attempts. So what are we waiting for? Let's get started. All right, so th today's case is SOC 287, or it was triggered by the rule named SOC 287. So what triggered this alert? Let's read through the title. Arbitrary file read on checkpoint security gateway. And that's the CVE name. So basically, Checkpoint Security Gateway is a security product that can be used or installed in any corporate network to monitor the traffic and apply security rules. It can be considered an, as a next generation firewall. So what happened here that the, um, the, the rule or the alert was triggered because there was a suspicion that uh, the, uh, the attacker was exploiting the CVE 2024-24918. Or 919. So this is a CVE that is actually discovered and it applies on checkpoint security gateway. So let's read through the uh, parameters. So what do we have here? The host name, CP Park Gateway 01. The destination IP address is here. So basically, this destination IP address is the IP address of the checkpoint security gateway appliance. The source IP address represents the IP address of the attacker or of the whoever is the uh, party or the end that is actually trying to um, exploit this CVE. And here we have the request type. It's a post request. The requested URL, that's the complete URL that was requested by the attacker. You see, this is the IP address of the uh, you know gateway followed by the path that was requested. And here we have the actual request. So basically, we have this AC shell, and then we have directory navigation all the way till we reach the etc password file though so, so basically the attacker was trying to access sensitive files on the checkpoint security gateway okay the alert trigger reason characteristics exploit pattern detected on request indicative of indicative exploitation of the cve okay so let's have a look at uh, this cve here we can use the national vulnerability database to have a more detailed look on this Description, potentially allowing an attacker to read certain information on checkpoint security gateways. Once connected to the internet and enabled with remote access VPN or mobile access software plates. So once you install the mentioned version or the uh, firmware version of the checkpoint security gateways on your network, and once it's connected to the internet, and of course, once you enable the remote access VPN, if you have done all of this, you will be actually exposing the security checkpoint security gateway to this uh, vulnerability. A security fix that mitigates this vulnerability is available. So basically, you have to update the firmware of checkpoint security gateways uh, to the recent or the latest version to prevent further attacks or to prevent any further exploitation of this vulnerability. And to top this off, there is uh, an active proof of concept on GitHub for this exploit. This repository contains a proof of concept exploit for the CVE, a critical vulnerability discovered in Checkpoint SVN. The vulnerability allows for reading system files. So if we go back here, we can see that the attacker is trying through the post request to read sensitive files, such as etc password. And you can see the exploit employs local file inclusion and directory traversal tactics to be able to uh, navigate through the files, navigate through the uh, system files to reach the destination. All right, so having uh, comprehended the alert and all of its uh, parameters, it's time now to take ownership. So we'll take ownership, click yes, I'm sure. And then you see the alert has now moved into the investigation channel. We click on create case to start going through the playbook. Okay, so you have the incident details. We see this information come up. This is the name, description, this is it type and the query date. Start the playbook, understand why the alert was triggered. In order to perform better analysis and, and determine whether the triggered alert is false positive, it is first necessary to understand why the rule was triggered. And instead of starting the analysis directly, first understand why the rule was triggered. So we actually did this, we examined the rule, we examined the exploit and we examined the connection parameters. It's safe now to click on next. Then we have to collect data. Gather some information that can be gathered quickly to get a better understanding of the traffic. This can be summarized as follows. So what do we have to do here? Ownership of the IP addresses and devices. 
Okay, let's uh, go to, let's open log management on a new tab, monitoring on, on, no, endpoint security on a new tab, and we have third intel on a new tab. Okay, now uh, we will uh, go back to monitoring, investigation channel, and have a look at the parameters that we can investigate. So we have the destination IP this, and source address, and maybe the host name. Okay, so we go to uh, log management. Here, let's have, let's grab the attacker's IP address, and we can search the logs to find any occurrences of the attacker's IP address. Once we do that, we'll be able to see what devices and uh, what host names connected to the attacker's IP address, as well as we can find out what are the uh, um, maybe endpoints and what are the related post requests that were exchanged between the attacker and other machines. So we can um, just click here on the um, destination address and we can paste in the value so we see we have no data here okay let's use raw log still we don't have any data so type going to select raw log and it contains the operator will be contains the value will be the, the ip address of the attacker so we have two log entries let's examine um, the first one as you can see, the, first, the one with tw that occurred at 12.15 p.m. It preceded the one that occurred at 12.30 p.m. So let's follow the chronological order here and examine the uh, oldest one first. Let's have a look here. So the time is firewall, the log came from the firewall, and the source address is the attacker's IP. Here are the source port, destination address. This is the IP address of the security or checkpoint security gateway. The destination port, 4423, it means that maybe the... Um, GUI interface of checkpoint security was installed or op operating on this port. We have a timestamp important for your uh, final report. Raw log, this is the IP, the timestamp. The method is post. The URL is the same URL we saw earlier in the while investigating the alert. The host, the cookie, and the request. So see, it's requesting the ETC password. Okay, so that is the. That's the first one. Now let's have a look at the other one. Other log entry here. Other log entry occurred at 12.30. We see here the same address, the attacker's address, and the destination address is the security checkpoint, or uh, checkpoint security. And here we see the attempt. So what happened here? Again, the file is being accessed, etc password. I'm actually kind of, uh, intrigued to find what was the response by checkpoint security so when the attacker tried or sent the post request asking to access this file what was the server's response that's what we're going to find out here you see here the attempt was actually logged in the access log of the web server so maybe now we want to investigate the access logs okay so here we can actually click on the plus sign to have a look at the uh, request and maybe we can find out what was the response so click on the post request here this one have a look so the request clients my crl and look at the response the response is 200 the code of the response is 200 with me which means that the attacker was successfully able to view the contents of the etc password okay let's see here another post request this is another post request. Let's have a look here. This one has a different response code, 201. And we see this one, post request as well. Let's have a look. Here, the attacker tried to access the ETC shadow. And you see the response is 403. It is not 200. So definitely the attacker accessed the ETC password file, judging by the response. All right, so now we know what the attacker tried to access. Let's go back now to the playbook. Um, okay. So we collected data. Next, examine the HTTP traffic. We already did that. Is the traffic malicious? It is definitely malicious. No questions asked. So malicious. What is the attack type? Which of the following is the attack vector in the malicious traffic you have detected as a result of your investigations? So it's not gamma injection. It's not either. It is LFI and RFI and other as well. 
So I'm going to choose LFI and RFI. Check if it is planned test. Let's see here. What do they mean by that? Regression tests or attack simulation products can trigger false positive alarms if the rules are not set correctly. Check whether the malicious traffic is the result of a planned test. Check if there's a, an email showing that there will be planned work by searching for information such as host names, usernames, IP address on the mailbox. So we go to the mailbox here. Um, maybe we can search uh, the IP here. Okay. How about we uh, go back to monitoring? Investigation channel. Maybe search with the host name. We want to see if any of these parameters are found in the uh, emails. Because if they because if they exist in the emails or they are mentioned in one of the emails, it means this might all be planned as a penetration test or something. Okay. And we have the destination address. Okay. We go to endpoint security here and we search for this IP address. This is the IP address of the uh, security gateway. We click here and we can investigate maybe the network actions. All right, so this is the destination IP, uh, the source IP of the attacker. See, there are many connections to the IP address or connections associated with the attacker's IP address. Let's make sure this is correct. The attacker's IP ends with uh, 6812. So it is this IP. And we have an, a similar IP that ends with 13. This uh, this is this looks like uh, a machine on the local network. Okay. Let's now investigate the processes. In the processes, there is nothing to investigate, I think. Browser history, terminal history. All right, so that is for the checkpoint security. It's enough to see that there uh, are connections to the attacker's IP address, as can be uh, seen here. Now let's go back to the main alert. I want to have a look at this IP address uh, using a threat intelligence platform. Maybe we can use Anyrun. So Anyrun, after you sign in, you can click on threat intelligence. And from here, you can paste in the IP, the URL, the domain, hash, or anything else, or any IOC that you have uh, access to. So we're gonna paste the IP search. Okay, it looks like I have a problem in the license. All right, I'm going to go back and use virus total. Like shows a URL. Okay, so we have four hits. Okay, community. Have a look here. This indicator was mentioned in a report. Go to details. These are who is lookup information. You see, it is uh, connected to Hong Kong. And uh, it maps to support.checkpoint.com. So it indeed refers to checkpoint. Go to relations, see what are the discovery relations. Okay, not very much uh, info here. So we're going to go back, but it's actually insightful to have a look at the uh, virus total lookup results of the IP address. Um, so it is not that uh, safe. Okay, go back to checkpoint, uh, go back to let's defend. So here we have the playbook. So check if it is a planned test. Is the malicious traffic caused by a planned test? Nope, we haven't found any uh, mentions of the IP addresses, the host name, or anything that has to do with the alert in the emails, which means that it is not planned. What is the direction of traffic? Is it from company to company? Is it from company to internet or the internet to company? You see here the direction of traffic. You can find this out by going back to the logs and search again with the IP address. Okay, examining the first one, you see here the source is the attacker's IP. 
and the destination is the Checkpoint Security Gateway IP address. Now, since Checkpoint Security Gateway is installed or supposed to be installed in the uh, company's parameters network, it means that it is internal to the organization. It's inside the company. And this was an external. So the direction is from source to destination, which means it is from the external to the internal. So from the internet to the company network. Check whether the attack was successful. It was successful, if you remember, because we saw that in the logs, the response code was 200 to the post request on the ETC password. So we're going to click on next, and it was successful. Containment. Now we have to go to uh, the endpoints. And from here, we're going to have to locate the security or checkpoint security host contain it right because we want to clean the infection or to clean or to uh, in, in our case here we want to update remove any vulnerable uh, software and update the existing firmware can I contain this and after we update this to the recent uh, we apply the recent patches we can then remove the containment but now we add the artifacts so the first value here would be the IP address of the attacker. It is attacker's IP. Okay. The next one here is the path. The path is an artifact. Path or the wild path. I'm going to add the other one here, the ultimate path to the ETC password the attacker chose. And there is the ETC shadow as well. So here, requested URL path. OK. We don't have hashes. There are no uh, DNS names. So we are actually satisfied with this list of artifacts. So we click on Next. Do you need tier two escalation? Tier two escalation should be performed in the following situations. In cases where the attack succeeds, when the attacker comprises or compromises a device in the internal network, in cases where the direction of harmful traffic is from inside to inside. Tier two escalation is not required in the following cases. In case where the attacks from the internet do not succeed. So in our case here, the attack, since the attack succeeded, we're gonna to need to perform escalation so that the team in the upper tiers would uh, clean the infection if there is and uh, remediate the endpoint so we're gonna yes here you write your notes click on next confirm and this is completed so now i go back to monitoring close alerts we see now the alert that we have investigated wait yeah so here in the investigation channel we see arbitrary file read and we're going to close this alert. So it is through positive. And now we go to close alerts. We see the alert that we have actually investigated. Now it is marked as resolved. So that was it.